What's going on guys? It's your boy Brandon from Modern to Me, and today we are finally starting classes. And classes are so impo important, and they're such like an abstract concept that I just had to make sl a slideshow to emphasize how important they really are to programming. So let's get started. So what are classes? Classes form object-oriented programming, and what this means is that classes really make up what are called objects. Instances of classes are sometimes referred to as objects, because a lot of times classes represent real-world objects. Like in games, objects can represent swords, trees, and enemies, and other things like that. So it's very important that you have a good grip on classes so you can really make the foundation of your game, so you can make that player class, you can make that enemy class, and you can make that map class of that certain level that you've really wanted to make. It's really important to know classes so you're able to able to do this. I was talking earlier in the methods tutorial about how methods help divide up the code because if you had all of your code only under the main method, it would get really ridiculously messy and you don't want that to happen. So that's why methods exist, so you can divide the code up into tasks that you want the code to perform. So it would make sense for, like, we've made some methods to sum up arrays, and so that makes sense to divide the code up like that. Classes essentially accomplish the same thing with dividing the code, except they divide the code into more of these, these objects, these ideas that you want to represent in your code. So it's nice that you can be able to do this, it's nice that you can make your code more readable and more accessible and more easy for you to edit yourself. So let's get started. Let me show you some code of a class. So right now you're probably thinking, wait, wait, Brendan, you lied to me. You said we're going to look at some code of a class. Well, we actually are. This is a class. We've always been working in classes. I touched on in one of the earlier tutorials about how all of your code goes in a class. So we have had our main method be in this first class the whole time. I don't know if you actually noticed that, I don't know if I told you guys, but you've actually been working with classes your whole lives. Well, maybe not your whole lives, but at least the whole life you've enjoyed with me. So let's actually make a new class. So to do this, go into the Package Explorer and click on this, this source. And in here, right-click Source, go to New, and then hit Class. This makes it really easy, it pops up, open this interface, and it makes it really easy for you to create a class and it got, kinda gets it started for you, so let's do this. So you have the source folder as tutorial slash source, or I named mine tutorial. This package, you can have different packages in Java which kind of separate classes even further, but we're all just gonna be working in our default package even though it discourages it. It makes it a lot easier for you to access your classes without having to do some fancy stuff, so just keep it like that. And now we're gonna name our class. We already have first class, so we're going to actually just create a class that represents an object like I was talking about in the the previous slideshow that you just watched. So let's make a person. We're going to make a person class. Looks good. Now, last time we made a class, we checked this public static void main, which would create this method. You do not want to do that this time because we you can only have one main method per, per program. So you can only have one because that's where your code starts. And if you had more than one, your code would want to start in more than one place. So that wouldn't work and your code probably wouldn't compile. So don't do that. Do not click that. Everything else looks good, so just click finish. And there you go. Now we have another class. We have this public class person. And it's the same exact thing as right here. Public class, first class. It's the same syntax that you see. So. Nothing fancy, everything is still the same. Now, let's talk about the makeup of a class. What does a class consist of? Classes can consist of a lot of different kinds of different code, coding techniques and strategies, but for the most part, the main way you can think of a class is for the first part of the class has instance variables. Let's type that out just so you know what you're doing, instance variables. And then the second part are the methods. Oops, that's not a comment. There we go. So this is the best way to organize your class by having the variables that are in your class and the methods. We haven't really had any very specific instance variables in this class that we've been working with. We've just been having variables within our methods, which is totally fine. You can still do that in other classes too. But when you're representing an object, a lot of times you're going to have variables that help define what your object is. So let's start making some of these instance variables so you know what I'm talking about. So what sorts of instance variables would you want to create? Well, some examples you want to create would generally be stuff that helps represent the objects you're trying to create. So if you're creating a person, you might want to have a field 
that would be their name. So let's let's type string name. And you also might want to have their age. So you can go int age. And you would also might want to have stuff like gender and a whole bunch of other things. I mean, you could represent so many things about a person, but let's just start there. Just keep it simple. So when you create instance variables in a class, what you don't want to do is you don't want to start assigning values to these right right away because that's really not what you want to do when you create a class. When you create a class, you might have several instances of these these persons. You might have a person that you create and you might have their name be Bob and their age be 10. And you might create another instance of this class and have their name be Jim and their age be 25. You might have several hundred instances even of these these person classes. And it's kind of like when you create several strings, you're creating several objects of the string class. And you don't want to have the string all be the same thing. So you don't want to start assigning names and ages to these these things. And it's also the same with in games. If you have an enemy class, you don't want to start assigning all of these different attributes to this one specific enemy class because you might have several different kinds of enemies in this specific game. So just leave these as they are, like we touched in the variable class. You don't have to set them as a value right away. So just leave it like that. Now one thing we are missing is a accessor uh, keyword. Like we have a public class and we've had in here, if this is a public method. For variables, like we were doing with our other methods, methods, excuse me, it's it's better practice just to have them be private if you don't need them to be public. So just type private before these. And then this is a lot better. It's nice to have your variables be private and then they can't get accessed from all over the place. So this is good practice. Now with private variables, you can't directly access them like you'd want to outside of the person class. This is kind of hard to explain, but just bear with me and I'll get, I'll get to it in a later tutorial real soon, real soon. But for now, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna scroll up to source and you're gonna hit generate getters and setters. And you'll see this little interface will pop up. And it's gonna have all of these different variables, these instance variables from your class. So it's pretty cool, this is really handy. So just click both of them and hit OK. And now what you see what this did is it generated all of these methods for you. It generated four methods, which is really handy. So what this does is this allows you to get the variable. Like if you wanted to access the age variable for, for a person, you'd type person.getAge with these and you'd be it would return the, the int value of their age. So that's really handy. And you can also set the variables by passing in the age and it's going to set I know you don't know the, this keyword yet, but it's going to set the age of that particular person. And same thing for the name, it's going to get and set the name variable. So that's really handy, and that's something really good to know that you can do that. You don't have to type these all out yourself. If you just go to source and then generate getters and setters, it will do it for you. So next tutorial, we're gonna be learning a lot more about classes. There's still a lot to learn about classes. You can never learn enough about classes. So we're gonna be doing that in next tutorial. So I'll see you guys there.